And I want to say thank you. Many of you filled out a survey, so I know that many of you are already using CGEM, which is absolutely awesome. But I'm going to just start with a little bit of basics, just to paint a picture of what I think and how I view it for diabetes. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. So, so really, this is about being able to live the life you want. And everyone knows that with what type 1 diabetes is. All of you know this. You've seen this slide. You know the story here. Um, you know that the pancreas basically makes no insulin at all. And what you have to do is then take either insulin via an injection or through a pump to keep your glucose levels normal. But I know a lot of times people on the outside don't realize what it is living with type 1 diabetes. All of you know, you don't wake up one morning and say, hey, guess what? I don't have diabetes today. So I'll do whatever I want. I won't take my insulin. I won't check on my glucose. That doesn't happen. It's with you every minute, every day. So when you get up in the morning, you kind of have to know what's my glucose level? What am I going to eat today? And how much insulin should I take? And really in order to do that, you want to really learn to think like a pancreas. So your pancreas, when you ate, made insulin to match the glucose level of whatever you're eating or whatever was happening at that point in your life. So when you have a meal and all of a sudden you go, oh, my glucose is 300. That doesn't mean you got a D. It doesn't mean you were a bad person. It doesn't mean you ate bad food. All it means is that we just need to think like a pancreas. Gee whiz. You know, it was 300 and maybe I took 10 units. I guess next time around I take 12. So anytime you see a glucose that's high or low, it's not a pass or fail grade. It's just trying to think like a pancreas. So you can see here, this person had their breakfast here at seven, lunch at 12, dinner at six, and the pancreas perfectly matched how much insulin to give. And you know in everyday life, what happens is, well, I could eat a meal one day, it goes up, it could be exercise, it could be stress, it could be something else that makes my glucose go up. But your pancreas always did an awesome job, and that's what we want to think about it. So when you think about diabetes, think about it that all I'm doing is trying to live, think like a pancreas so I know how much insulin to take. And in order to do that, CGM has really transformed our lives. And many of you already know this. Yay. Kudos to all of you. Goodbye to sore fingers. But what we want is reliable glucose data. We want data we can trust. All of you know that let's say you had a meal today, you had a sandwich. And just as an example, you normally take 10 units of insulin. Well, you know, one day you eat the sandwich, take 10 units, and you're perfect. The next day you eat the same sandwich, and you're too low. The next day you eat the same sandwich, take 10 units, and you're too high. That's because you need to know which way the glucose is headed. And with CGM, you know that and can adjust your insulin. And I know it's always hard. When, like you're going to go, you're watching a movie, or you're doing something at night, and you want to have a snack. And then you're like, oh. Crap, do I take one unit? Do I take two? What if I drop low in the middle of the night? You want to be able to go to bed without worrying about that nighttime hypoglycemia. And that's where CGM has been a lifesaver, but yet you don't want it alarming when you don't need it. And you want all those little things to work correctly. So you want to be able to dose your insulin correctly, and we'll go over that. You want to know how much to take for a meal. So if I'm high, what do I take? Again, all you're doing is thinking like a pancreas. So you use your diabetes team, your physician, your endocrinologist, diabetes educator, whoever you see, to be part of your team. So you can then figure out how much insulin to take. And now you can think on a pancreas every day, three, four times a day, when the rest of your healthcare team is not with you, you are making those decisions. So you need to have all the knowledge and data at your hands to be able to think like a pancreas. And when you exercise, that's the most frustrating. Okay, I took this protein snack and I thought I'd be okay, but I dropped low. The next day I ate extra carbs and now I'm too high. And now I wanted to exercise to lose weight and now I have to eat something. It defeats the purpose. So again, there are all those things that CGM will help you with along with your team to determine what should that right food be to eat? Or should I eat food, not eat food? When should I exercise? What should I do? And again, this depends on you. You shouldn't have to have the diabetes be in charge and say, guess what, you should exercise in the morning because that's better. No, you should be able to say, you know what, this is my schedule. This is how my life is. I want to be able to exercise in the morning one day and maybe evening. Whatever you want to do is what you should be able to think like a pancreas and match using the CGM and your healthcare team to help adjust your insulin. 
So you should have that choice, not the diabetes. So the thing that I'm most excited about is that over the years, the CGM systems have become very accurate. I've been around a while and I had patients who use this gluca watch. And this number 22% is something called an MARD. It tells us how accurate a CGM is. And to be accurate, it needs to be under 10. So my first patient, a type one, he and his dad got this gluca watch. They were all excited because there was finally a sensor out and they basically threw it in the garbage because it was useless. Because you can see why it wasn't as accurate. But over time, since 2017, we have CGMs with the MARD under 10%. Sorry. And the many of you I know use the Dexcom and that's like a 9%. The Abbott just came up with a new one, the Freestyle Libre 2, which is 9.2%. So we now have accurate, we can trust the data, which is awesome. And again, I know many of you are not using meters, but just to see, I just wanted to put this up to show you that with the meters that are on the market, only one third of them met the standards. So you can see how unreliable data we were using, but it was the best we had before CGM came on board. And again, kudos to all of you. I'm so happy that most of you are on CGM. And this is what was really interesting for me. If somebody had a meter and was checking and they had just peeled a grape or peeled an orange, look how their blood glucose was 360 if they forgot to wash their hands. And I actually had people who, you know, during the winter time would call me and say, you know, Dr. Reddy, my blood glucose is 300 and it makes no sense. And this was a, just a patient with diabetes and pregnancy. So they were checking one or afterwards. And I'm like, how could it be 360? This is crazy. Had her go wash her hand. It was normal. It turned out she was using a lotion from Bath and Body Works because it was winter and that had something in it. So you can see how the meters were quite inaccurate with many ways and how your CGM is so much more reliable because it's measuring the interstitial fluid. So all of you have said goodbye to these finger sticks, except for when you're not sure what your CGM is doing. You can see them in real time. You all have those low and highs. And one of the things to remember is you don't want to get alert fatigue. I've had people when we set them, we set the low and we set the high and they're like, they come back and go, Dr. Eddie, I'm going crazy. I'm like, what's wrong? That damn thing goes off all the time. I just shut them all off. And we're like, no, the high alert needs to be set where it's appropriate for you, where it helps you, but it doesn't drive you crazy. So if you're going crazy with your high alert or your low high alert for sure, talk to your physician and your healthcare team and change it. And the same, the lower alert. So let's say you have a lower alert set at 70, but you find that by the time that thing alerts you, you're 55. We need to get that adjusted. So again, talk to your healthcare team because those alerts need to work for you. And let's say during night, you know, during the daytime, you don't want to be bothered if you're at 80 because you can tell, but at nighttime you do. Well, with the Dexcom G6, you can do a different schedule for a different time of day. And now with CGM, as all of you know, you know the arrows. So let's say you had a meal where you normally would take 10 units of insulin for that meal, but you had your CGM on and the arrow was pointing down, then you need to be cutting your insulin down. In this case, there's two arrows. So you need to talk to your physician. How much lower do I go? Do I go 10% low? Do I go 20%? So talk with your healthcare team and say, what do I do with my arrows? What adjustment should I make? And that's what the arrows are there for. So whenever you're ready to eat a meal, look at your glucose and look at your arrow. So your insulin dose needs to be adjusted to the arrow and the glucose level so that you can do whatever you want to do without wondering about highs or lows. So that's very, very important to keep that in mind. And if it's not happening, talk to your team. So here's what's out there for the personal CGMs. We've got the Dexcom G6 that many of you are familiar with, the Guardian Connect that goes well with the Medtronic pump, the Freestyle Libre Fresh, and the Eversense, which is an implantable sensor. And this is a Dexcom G6 that many of you are very familiar with, your sensor, transmitter. This has got an MARD of 9%, so very accurate. You can wear it for 10 days. The only thing to remember that interferes with it is acetaminophen or Tylenol if you use more than 1,000 milligrams every six hours, which I'm sure most people don't wear. And just remember that you have a custom alert schedule and there's no need to calibrate it. They did check factory versus you know, a patient trying to do it in the factory calibration is actually very, very accurate. And I know many of you have the Dexcom G6, so remember to set this low alert where it's going to alert you in time. The high alert where it's important for you, but it's not a nuisance. 
So if your A1C is higher, you need this higher. If your A1C is a little lower, then you could come lower so that you get warned when you need it. So let's say I ate my meal and I'm all of a sudden 250 and then you're like, oh, no wonder I forgot my insulin. And that's what you want it for. Not where it wakes you up and drives you crazy all the time. So remember to talk to your physician and set those alarms accordingly for night and daytime. And this is a nice thing that I like about the Dexcom G6 that it really has a predictive low alert where you're gonna know within 20 minutes if you're gonna be at or below 55. So this is extremely important and you wanna make sure that this is turned on. And if this is turned on, then the low threshold, won't, you won't get like a double alarm. So if you're in a meeting and you're 118 and you know you've got 20 minutes, well, hey, you got 20 minutes to go get something to eat and this truly prevents those low glucose levels. And this is how it works. So this urgent low alert, this is glucose over here. This is glucose that is rapidly falling. And so this prediction alert, because of that rate of fall, it can tell within 20 minutes you're gonna be at 55. You, but if you only did a threshold at 80, then by the time you got that, it would be failing so quickly, you might be even be low by the time that 80 warned you. So you always wanna make sure that this um, urgent low soon alert is on. So make sure it's always on. And this is the urgent low alarm that you can't change. This will always warn you when you're at or below 55. So as you can see, your Dexcom G6 has many different alerts. Make sure you've got this urgent low soon alert on all the time. The high, make sure it's set so that's not driving you crazy. And then talk with your healthcare team whether you need this rise or fall alerts, if that's gonna be helpful for you. And it depends on each one's individual situation. Obviously you want alerts that say you're out of range or no readings and you can adjust your sound. So really you wanna customize this for you. What works for you, what helps you to live the life you want and does not drive you crazy, but helps to improve your A1C and prevent low glucose levels. And this is alert schedule. So you can do a different one for nighttime and for daytime to make it customized for you. So at this point, I wanna stop for a second and uh, see if anyone has any questions. There is some overlap in the slides. Um, I, I, I'm Jeremy, I'm an atypical adult onset type one diabetic, um, 12 years. Mm -hmm. I use the Freestyle Libre CGM and I don't have it on me. And when you say to check, I always, I'm, you know, when I have my CGM, I want to know all the time. When I'm pricking my fingers, it's like the less, the better. Right. So there's two, you know, interesting concepts in administering the number between the time. And, I think that since there's minute and hour, the delay, and so I panic. And you said a lot of things that would help to keep me from doing that. Yep. Um, I don't have any alerts set, so it doesn't make any noise, which I like. So I, I do most of it myself. Now, sure. I'm leaning towards the pump mm -hmm. and leaving this thing on a little bit longer to try and get those numbers tighter because I've had to make some adjustments. Sure. So I'm listening and I'm seeing some overlap and it sounds like it's working. And I noticed the CGM also would benefit those people that didn't need to have blood drawn. They could just tell during the time that they needed it and then be able to, you know, go back to pens and pricks. I, that's how I'm looking at it right now. Sure. And I'll show and you. Sure. you, and they, you, know, you, you need okay. Yeah. And the Freestyle Libre too, you know, you, the new Freestyle Libre actually has high and low alarms on it too, which you can turn on or off, which is nice. The new version that's come out. Yeah. But with that, but the nice thing is you don't have to poke your finger at all because both CGM systems are perfectly accurate. And I agree, when you've got a sensor on, now you know in real time and you don't have to poke your finger to find out. The lag in between sensor and that is really only five minutes at the most. And with many symptoms, it's even less. The new Freestyle Libre actually checks every minute and the Dexcom is every five minutes. So that's very good. Welcome, Rosalind. <laughs> 
We'll go back to sharing the screen now. There we go. Okay. Can everybody see the screen all right? Okay. Whoops. I don't know what this is. Sorry about that. It's not. Okay. I'm going to go back to it again. Just a minute. A little bit of a. There we go. Now it's great. Okay. There we go. So now this is the Freestyle Libre. And this is the Freestyle Libre 14 day that's currently on the market. It does not have high or low alarms. As Mr. Cole pointed out, you've got the little sensor that you wear on your arm and you're able to scan it and know what your glucose level is. It does have the nice arrows that tell you if you're stable or going up or down. It's 14 days and here's your built-in sensor. Equally accurate. You've got a reader or it can go to your phone. And the MARD is 9.4%. So it's a very, it's a system that works as well. The latest one that just came out within the last week is the Freestyle Libre 2. And it works exactly like this SID, except for one new feature. It has got high and low alerts, which are optional. So if they're a nuisance and you don't want to be alerted all the time because you get fatigued, you can turn them off. If not, they are high and low, and you can set them to exactly what you want them to be. And they will, what will happen is it'll vibrate. And when it vibrates, you will scan, and then you can tell what your glucose level is. So this is another option for patients. Then you've got the Guardian Connect, which goes with, usually with the Medtronic pump. It does have a two-hour warm-up period, and you do have to calibrate it two times a day. And the bad part is it's not FDA approved for dosing decisions. So you still have to poke your finger and you do have to calibrate twice a day. So it's not usually my favorite except for a pump patient. The next one is the Eversense. This is new in the, newer on the market. It's implantable. It's good for three months and it does have a 24 hour warm up time. But again, you have to calibrate it twice a day. It is approved for insulin dosing, but you still have that calibration. But for people who are tired of wearing something, don't want to change a transmitter, that there is an option out there for those individuals who want something different. So I'm going to stop sharing again and see if anyone has any questions. I see there's something in the chat. Yeah, yes, Scott, uh, go ahead. I think it's more of a comment, and I don't know, maybe it would help others. Uh, Absolutely. Um, recently, connected with someone from camp and mm -hmm. I was saying, oh, it's a frustrating day. It's the day mm -hmm. for me to calibrate the sensor. And I find it a real nuisance. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can, uh, there are some tricks I've learned and it, it, they are tricks to get around it, but uh, it can monopolize that day. Well, and it can monopolize every day of, uh, you know, your schedule. And the, ch the challenge I've found is, and I think it's a management that's going to have to be worked on, is that my blood sugar will drop in the late afternoon. Well, if I eat, you know, that can tweak and foul up the calibrating. So it, it can really be a nuisance. And I was uh, really curious about and will be making a change with pump and sensor uh, like a a few people from camp have been telling me about where you're not doing it uh, so often and not needing to test at least twice a day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Scott, for that comment. And that is, you know, a nuisance. And now that we have, you know, the Dexcom G6, which kind of interacts with some of the pumps, you don't have to calibrate it at all. And that's really, really helpful for, because for those sensors, the Guardian Connect and the Eversense that need to be calibrated has to be like you pointed out in steady state, which makes it difficult and really a nuisance. I'm sure the newer versions won't have that, but for right now, the Dexcom G6 does interact with your pumps, with a tandem pump at least, and you don't have to calibrate it, which is a big boon. Thank you for that comment. Any other comments? Uh, one more. Um, if I were to go to a pump, uh, which pump is better suited for the freestyle? So right now the freestyle Libra is not approved for as automatically with any pump, but you'll be able to take the glucose level off of the freestyle Libra 
and just manually put it into your pump, but it won't automatically connect with the pump. The Dexcom G6 automatically connects with the tandem pump. And the, uh, the in pens, the smart pens, the refillable cartridges, they're more environmentally friendly. I can recharge them. Are you familiar with those two? Would you suggest that if I were to make the next step that it might be freestyle in pens? Um, again, you'd have to talk with your physician to be 100% no sure, but the in-pen definitely would be a nice step to make. And then, you know, and then you could think about a pump down the road because in-pen would help with your insulin dosing. So that definitely would be, uh, and you'll see the data I'm going to show you now that really says that CGM is the way to go with injection. You don't necessarily have to go to the pump as the next step. CGM is the number one step. And like Vicky was saying in the beginning, you know, the two, the CGM is what she absolutely loves. And that's what the evidence I'm going to go over right now. So that'll kind of answer your question, Mr. Cole. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. We shall move on to the evidence then. Go back to sharing my screen. Okay. So let's look at CGM. Does it really make a difference and what evidence do we have? So in the, I know many of you are familiar with the type 1D exchange registry data and all of you may have contributed data to it. It's just data from people with type 1 diabetes across the country and looking at what happened. So what they looked at is they looked at the A1C level in relationship to using a CGM. And so I'm just going to look at this group in here and then the RAS group. These are people 13 to 25 years of age. In green are people who are just on injections. And then when you look at people who went to an injection with the CGM, for example, as Mr. Cole pointed out, if he's now going, well, he's on insulin too, but if you went to an in with CGM, you would get a further reduction in A1C. If you are in a pump and then added a CGM, you went from 9 to 8.3. Same thing with people who are older. Somebody was on insulin with a meter, they were at 8.2, but once they added a CGM on, they went to 7.3. So really you can see the point is that it doesn't matter whether you're on injection or pump. When you add in CGM, you improve your A1C. So the first thing that any type one a patient with type 1 diabetes needs is obviously insulin, but after that, the first thing is a CGM because they're so accurate. That is what you need. And then you can decide, do I want to stick with my injections? Do I want to go to an in-pen? Do I want to go to a pump? That's your personal preference. The CGM, like I said, is helping you live the life you want. You don't have to be hooked up to a pump if you don't want to be having something on your body all the time. If you would prefer an in-pen, you could do that. If you just prefer the insulin syringes, you could do that. So you have a choice. So that CGM allows you that choice because it improves your A1C regardless of how you take insulin. And this is an important word. These are all ways to deliver insulin. The pump is a way to give insulin. The injection is, the in-pen is, and you can try each to see what works best for you. But the CGM is key, which all of you have. Yay. That's awesome. So this is a study where all of showing how well ahead all of you are. This was done a couple years ago in 2017, where they took people with type 1 diabetes and they looked at using a meter versus using CGM. Here is the baseline patients when they were on just meters. And then all they did is they switched them to CGM. So if they were on insulin injections or pump, they didn't change anything. All they did was a CGM. And just by switching to a CGM, they got a 1% reduction in A1C in more than 52% of the patients. And remember, we want to be able to go to bed without worrying about hypoglycemia. So again, just by using a CGM, there was a 79% decrease in nocturnal hypoglycemia. So again, CGM is number one. It helps that A1C and it reduces those lows at night. And again, all of you are ahead of the game, but just here's that. All of you already know this, but looking at the scientific data, it says exactly what you already know. This is a study that I really liked. It's a long study that was done for three years in which they took individuals like yourself and they let everybody choose whatever they wanted. So some people chose that I'm just going to do injection. I'm going to use my meter. I don't want to deal with that CGM. There are others who are already on a pump and said, I'm just going to do my pump and a meter. Don't give me one more thing to put on. There were some who wanted to go on injections uh, and CGM. 
And then there were some who wanted their pump with CGM. So they had already got a pump and added on a CGM. And this is real world. So all of these 94 people who were in the study picked whatever they wanted. This was their personal preference. This is how they wanted to live their life. And in the people who were in the CGM group, they wore their sensor more than 70% of the time. So let's see what happened. And that's gonna answer some of the questions some of you asked. So I'm gonna go really slow through this slide so you can see it. This side is A1C. This is the three-year data, 36 months. This blue are the people who are on injections with a meter. This gray is pump with a meter. So in this group, injections on a meter, pump on a meter, you know, they went from 8.4, you know, really not much change, 7.9, 7.8, didn't really change significantly. Look at this green one. These are the people who were on injections and took CGM. Significant lowering in their A1C to seven. And here's the interesting part. They were better than the people who did pump and a meter. So in other words, if, if I'm a person with type one diabetes and I have a meter, the first thing I need to do is go to CGM because injections with CGM is better than a pump with a meter. And you can see the injections and CGM and pump and CGM were very, very close. So again, pointing to you that this is a these are two different ways of delivering insulin and you need to do what's best for your situation. And you and your healthcare team can decide that. So, and along with this, Look over here, these are the people who are on meters, these two groups. The green is baseline and the orange is three years later. And this means if the P is not less than 0 0.05, it means it really didn't change. So without a CGM just using the meter, they did not reduce their time in hypoglycemia. But in this group, when they were on injections and added a CGM, look at the time in hypoglycemia, it went from 9.4 all the way down to 5.5. And if they're a pump, and added a CGM, their time in hypoglycemia went from 9% to 5.3. So no matter which one you decided, injection or a pump, adding CGM reduced your time in hypoglycemia. And we all know we don't wanna be low because we feel goofy. We don't wanna be low where we pass out because we don't wanna lose any brain cells, that's not fun. So we wanna make sure that we don't have these hypoglycemic episodes. And then all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with what's called time and range because you wear a CGM. I'm sure your healthcare team goes over that with you. And you want that to be over 70%. And in this one, you can see with just a, a meter or with a pump, they only got to that 54, 57. But when they added on CGM, 48% to 69 in the group on injections, then the pumpers added on CGM 50 to 72%. So adding CGM gets you more in a normal level and gets that A1C down. So in summary, when you use CGM with either a pump or multiple daily insulin injections, you get similar reduction in A1C. And using a CGM with injections is more effective than just using a pump with a meter. So that's really, really important to know. So anybody who's new with type one diabetes, the first thing we do is give them a CGM. It used to be the first thing we did was give a pump, but that was before the CGMs became so accurate. So now the first thing we do is give them a CGM. And then remember we talked about the Dexcom with that urgent low soon alert, and I was kind of saying you should definitely keep it on. Well, this shows the percent time spent in hypoglycemia. This is in green is where they had that urgent low soon off and this is where it was on. The time in, with less than 55, which is kind of dangerously low, went from 1.1% to 0.7%. And here too, the time less than 70 went from 3.7 to 3%. So that urgent low soon alert really, really gives you the time to be able to prevent those hypoglycemic episodes. So if you have a G6, definitely make sure that this is on. And then all of you who have Dexcom know that Dexcom has something called a share app where you can share data with other people to follow you. And so does the Libre. The Freestyle Libre has a Libre link up app where you can share data with other individuals as well. The Freestyle Libre 2 doesn't have an app yet, but that should come in a couple months. 
And if you do do the share feature, you spend more time in target range, 51 versus 46, less time in lows, and less time in high. And I used to think when you look at the chart, gee, I don't want somebody following me all the time. But in actuality, it reduces the low. I actually had a physician I took care of, and he would go between patients and would end up getting low and get into a patient's room and then be really low. So what he did is he gave his staff the share app. So then in between patients, they would go, hey, doc, you're dropping low. Get some glucose. Get some sugar. Now you can go see your next patient. So sometimes all you want is your coworkers so that you're more effective at work, although in the era of Zoom, we're kind of all at home right now doing work. But don't think of the share app as somebody checking on you, but somebody just being kind of your helper there so that you feel your best and you're able to perform your best. So I really feel like CGM has been the best thing after the discovery of insulin in my book because it's really changed the lives of my patients and transformed them. So at this point, I want to stop for a few minutes and see if anyone has any other questions on the data or anything. Mm, I'm good. You're good. Okay. I don't have a question. Sure. Comments? Yes. Go ahead, Vicki. Um, but it is a comment and it's about the share app. So I live alone and um, I, I was diagnosed as an adult, so I never had a caregiver. Nobody really understands my disease. I don't want to stress people out. <laughs> and because I know that my best friend would be stressed out if she saw, you know, my, my numbers sometimes. But I um, met a type one who is very similar to the way that I manage my diabetes. And we decided to follow one another. And I tell you, it has been very eye-opening. It's been comforting. It allows me to see, I know we both work really hard to keep really tight control, but it allows me to see that, you know what, we're all human and there's gonna be those days. And we just, we help each other and we give each other a little bit of, you know, hey, looks like you're having a bad day, hang in there, or I got a, urgent low this morning from her and I just sent her a quick text are you okay she goes yeah I'm treating and you know so if you have the opportunity to do that I would highly recommend it because it has been such a good experience hey thank you Vicki for that because I think that is the beauty of the share app yeah very good yeah I'd like to add to what Vicki said uh sure. If it's, if it's the app, uh, that's one way. If it's uh, just communication with other diabetics, and diabetics know, you know, to have that communication of, it's good to know someone that they can share what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, today I've been communicating with someone else that's in the room that my blood sugar today just have been crazy. And I'm wearing the CGM and uh, it just stuff happens. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I was as high as 392 and then down to 52. Yep. So it's just uh, for a variety of reasons, it's good to be able to have someone to bounce these things off of. And it's not only data, but it's just how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why I love the organization, the Diabetes Youth Foundation and organizations just like this because they provide a way for people to connect. Anyone else? Lena, did you have a question? I noticed you're unmuted. I, I did. Um, so I have the uh, T-Slim pump and I also use the Dexcom G6. Um, and I moved to Control IQ earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And one of the frustrating things that I deal with is now it allows my blood sugar to rise even as high as 180, which I didn't have before. So I've noticed my A1C is starting to rise. It used to be like 5.5, five, 5.6. Five, five, now I'm like 5.9. And one would say, well, that's not a really big difference, but I can't seem to get myself out of that like 150 to 180 range because I guess it's considered okay by, uh, you know, I don't know if, what, what standards. And so are there ways, I would feel better if I can get it back down into 140 or below, which is what I was running before on basal IQ. Are there ways around like looking at CGM or even the pump settings where I could kind of work my way back down? I will point out I, I don't get low. Mm -hmm. So one of the advantages of control IQ is like my hypoglycemia is, you know, less than two or three percent of the month. Maybe I have that. So I know it's a trade, but I was just wondering if you have any advice. Sure. I mean, you'd have to obviously talk with your own physician, but just in general, what many people have done is use the nighttime mode for longer because that gives you tighter control. 
Right. And many of my patients have done that. So there is a way to change some of those settings in control IQ to be able to get tighter control. Okay. And then so even like bolusing for meals and being in, in sleep mode that doesn't sort of change the, the, not the algorithm, but the way it kind of like brings you back down or, or anything like that? No. It does okay. not, no. Yeah. So that's kind of a trick that many of my patients have used and we've used. And some people will, you know, they'll get up at six, but they'll keep them in that sleep mode till like 11 because they have that tighter glucose mm -hmm. level with that than the daytime mode. And it seems to work fine. It doesn't change okay. it around. Any other questions? No? Okay. So then we'll go to the next part of it. Go back to sharing my screen here. So the next question is now, we all love CGM. And now how can we use technology, because all this tech stuff going around to take this even a step further and unleash really the full potential of CGM? And this is what really excited me is I'm actually, I just joined Steady Health about two months ago, actually. It's a virtual diabetes clinic. And this is what we do at Steady. We take the power of CGM and we really leverage it and unleash it further to help our patients live a better life. And I just wanted to share with you so you could see how technology can further improve upon what CGM can do for you. So what we have at Steady Health is this little app. So now instead of logging your meals and writing them down to take into when you see your endocrinologist or physician or whoever your provider is, you can actually take a picture of this meal. And your blood glucose data from your CGM goes directly to that. It could be a Freestyle Libre, it could be a Dexcom, whatever you're wearing. And then from that, you're then able to see how these meals affect your glucose level and your insulin dosing. So here's an example of what it looks like with the Steady Health app and what you're able to see. So for this meal here, you just took a picture of your meal. Your glucose was 102. This is all automatically inputted. You're not inputting your glucose levels. They're automatically coming from the CGM. All you're doing is taking a picture of your meal. And you can see how you had a change in 26. So whatever you insulin you gave here was fine. You did a great job. This particular meal, though, you went up to 110. Not, and so you go, oh, okay, we didn't think like a pancreas. So now when you go in to see your physician, you don't have to be like, you know what, about a week ago, my glucose, I ate this meal and I think it went up like to 197 or 200, but I'm not really sure which day it was. This is something that you're now able to message your physician right away and get an answer. Right away. Got a support so that you can say, guess what, I had this meal yesterday and look what it did. What should I adjust? So now you can get that extra information to be able to think like a pancreas. Or here's an example of where it was portion size. This day you were not too hungry. You had a little chicken, a little bit of rice. It did fine. Your insulin dose was perfect. It went up about 50 and up to 60 points is all right with a meal. But this day, you, you know, you were a little more hungry. You had a little bigger helping of rice and that insulin wasn't enough. So the portion size made a difference. Again, you're now able to see this visually. You don't have to write it down. Your physician can look and know exactly what you ate and you get an answer to what do I do with my insulin dose? So the next time you decide to have a bigger meal because you're hungry, you know what to do. And then we all put in the carbs, or at least most people will put in the carbs to be able to figure out how much insulin they need. So in this particular day, you had a sandwich. You were using an insulin carb ratio of one unit for every 12 grams. You took three units. You ended up too high. You wanted to be under 180 or 226. So based on this, your physician was able to adjust your dose by looking at this nice visual and knew your ratio is actually one unit per nine grams. And now this is what you do. So if you're using an in-pan or a pump, it makes it very easy to do this calculation because it's built in. If you're using injections, you obviously have to do it manually, but having this extra data beyond the CGM is going to help you to be able to really live the life that you want because now you can Think like a pancreas a lot better than before. What about when you decided to exercise? Here you ate this meal, you went up, and then you took a couple steps. And you could see that an hour and a half later, you went down. So now your physician is able to look at that with you and say, okay, what do we do for your insulin? How do we adjust it before exercise and after exercise? And then so here, this is what it would look like on the app. So you would have your meal and you would know exactly what your glucose was doing with that meal. 
can send that in and get an answer. And then again, using that technology a step further, you would get a monthly report that gives you an estimate of that A1C. And then you can look at your time and range week by week by week. You know, that week I was 77, I did really great. This not so great, so what do we change here? That doesn't mean, again, no pass or fail here. It's just what do we do to think like a pancreas? You can see where you are low and see week by week what's going on. And you can set your own ranges. Like um, Lena was just saying, you know, yeah, they see that 180 is okay, but I don't like the way my fasting is, it's too high. So you can set your own personal range. This person's personal range was 70 to 130. And this time and range that we're talking about is not the standard, this is talking about personal range. You can customize this to what you want. And this is what we all need. We all need somebody to say, you're doing a good job. Be our little cheerleader here. And if, it, and if it's been a difficult week, you want someone to be like, hey, can we do something to support you? So this is what we do at Steady Health. We monitor our patients' glucose levels and we're able to look and see what they're doing and send them a little message every two weeks. Because again, diabetes is ongoing. It's not just every three months when you see your doctor, but you need that support in between and that's what we help you do. So here's how I feel about CGM, and many of you are already there. You've already said goodbye to sore fingers, yes. And you know you have reliable glucose data. So when you're ready to bolus for that meal or for corrections, look and see where your glucose is and where those arrows are headed. And then if you have your low alerts on, you'll be able to sleep without worrying about nighttime hypoglycemia. And I just heard about something kind of interesting where with all this technology, some people have done their own thing where they've hooked up their um, CGMs to those automatic systems. So then now when the gl glucose goes low, the light in the room goes up because some people don't hear the alarm or the vibration. So I thought that was interesting. So if you Google, you'll find people doing that out there. And now you're able to dose your insulin correctly because you can visualize and see for which each meal, what exactly is happening, how to adjust it. You're able to exercise. So you're really using CGM along with technology helps you to see glucose levels in real time, accurately dose your insulin, and there's data showing that that prevents hospitalizations related to DKA, low glucose, or diabetes-related hospitalizations. So at this point, I'm going to stop and open up for questions. Or comments, anybody have any? If you just unmute yourself. Scott, yes, go ahead. Did you have a question or comment? No, no. Okay, okay. okay. I have a question, Dr. Reddy. Sure. Um, who would you say are um, the best candidates for study health? What do you think you guys... Um, everybody. There's not anybody who's the best. Or, it's just anybody who wants to um, let, be able to um, leverage technology to get the most out of their CGM. The other, the other person, other individual would be, you know, uh, it, we do all virtual visits. So you get to see the doctor from the comfort of your own home. So if it's hard to get to the doctor, hard to reach the doctor, or the travel time is too long, you're a candidate for steady help. So anyone who wants to get a little bit more out of it, um, anybody who would like some support in between, anybody who would like the virtual visit and not having to wait in a waiting room is a candidate, you know, to see steady. And if you're happy with your endocrinologist and you're getting all the support you need, absolutely, please stay with them. But this is for if you're unhappy or you want a little bit more, we're here to help. You just go to steady.health and uh, you can click on that and be there. And we're only in California at this point, but we will be expanding to the state of Washington. So, but I think all of you are probably in California, but you're in Phoenix, right, Arizona? Right, <laughs> right, right now it's only California, so. Else. And it's both type 1s and type 2s, by the way. We see both. And even pre-diabetes. And then we also have our diabetes educator and staff who's part of our team. So you have access to the diabetes educator as well 24-7 along with the endocrinologist. You know, one of the things that I have discovered with my CGM, I use it a lot different now than I did let's say, and you know, I had the very first Dexcom that came out and um, I would, I would get alarm fatigue all the time and I hated it. 
And, and especially because the first Dexcom that came out wasn't as good as now the G6, mm -hmm. of course. Exactly. So it was frustrating that it wasn't right and the alarms were going off and I would just get, I would get upset and I stopped using it for a long time and then I would try it again. And um, I've changed the way I use my CGM data and I really, I really use it more for management than even counting carbohydrates. I kind of know, I eat similar things all the time, and I kind of know how they're going to affect me. So I'll look at something and I'll say, okay, that's going to take about four units. And mm -hmm. my alarms are set to where um, I've got them fairly tight. So if I start to creep up, I know that maybe that wasn't enough insulin. I can keep an eye on it. And um, it's helped me because I... I, I just felt like I was failing at counting the carbs all the time. And again, watching the trend, where am I at? What do I think this meal may take? And then I would dose to that versus just putting in the formula every time. Didn't work for me. Exactly. With and that, and then also lowering my high alert, because mm -hmm. if I can stay under 200, I could probably stay under 180. I could probably stay under 160. And so that has helped me tremendously as well. Thank you, Vicki, for that comment. Because when Dexcom looked at their data, when you lower your like, high alert, it showed that you improve your time and range and A1C. And like you said, that's exactly how they did it. You know, if you're 200, then you did okay. Then you come to 180, where there's no alarm fatigue, but it's helping you get under control. Right. That's absolutely right. The data needs to be individualized to you. So that's perfect. And then I know, Lena, you'd asked a little bit about the tandem pump at that point. In our internal data at Steady Health, when we looked at people who switched to the tandem control IQ, all of them improved their A1C because we kind of, you know, did those different algorithm changes so that they could maintain that tighter control. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like from the data that the pump came before the CGM. Is that correct? Am I... um, so, no, so the thing is, historically with type 1s, way back, that I'm talking about 10, 10, 15 years ago, the CGMs were not accurate. So we would, as accurate, so we'd always go to the pump first and CGM later. But in this day and age, for the last two years, if someone has type 1 diabetes, the thing that comes first is CGM. Then second would be do you want injection? I mean, do you want an in-pen? Do you want a pump? Like, would, or do you want to continue with your injections? That would be second. So in this day and age, CGM first and pump a second. I think everybody should be given a CGM before they leave the hospital if, they, if they're diagnosed. <laughs> that is absolutely right. And that's what we're trying to get to. I'm really passionate about CGM and that's what I've been pushing a lot. That they need to have, be able to walk out of the hospital with that CGM, just like they used to walk out with a meter. Yeah. It shouldn't be, you know, right to the insurance company, you'll get it when you go home. Yeah. Yep, that's what I'm trying to push everywhere. I'm real passionate about that, so thank you. <laughs> no more questions? No. Anybody have any tips or tricks that they do that they want to share? My food never looks as good. I know my food does look as good as it does in the pictures, but it, it will be interesting to see what the, uh, the calculations come up with instead of having for me to think about it. And I, I don't think I'd take a picture of my food and let the, app do it i pretty much just kind of get a you know an idea and then make the adjustments from there so i don't know yeah with study health the picture the the picture of the food that's taken is app doesn't calculate your insulin or anything it's just a right? help. i know yeah <laughs> that would be nice though that would be even nicer <laughs> if we could do it right correct we're not there yet we might be one day <laughs> that's right well we are at the top of the hour so I don't know if um, if you want to share your contact information sure. in the chat, Dr. Reddy, because I, yep. I, I actually think that um, Steady Health sounds really interesting. If I lived in California, I would definitely look into that. Sure. 
I actually, I, I'll just share my screen. I have the contact on there too. So let me just go back to this and I can share it. If you guys don't have a pen, maybe you, if you have your phone handy, just take a picture of it. Yeah, it's, so steady.health is the website. And if not, there's a phone number or email. But if you go to the website, you can sign up right from the website. We'll be in Arizona someday. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, right. I have a lot of people that could benefit from this. <laughs> yes, yes, Vicki. We'll definitely be there one of these days. That's great. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. Um, I, I think that was a wonderful presentation.